Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your marriage without your husband's conscious effort so that you feel desired, taken care of, and special, even if your relationship feels completely hopeless. I'm Laura Doyle, and today I'm talking about what to do when you realize, hey, my husband and I have nothing to talk about. My guest Dee's relationship lacked connection. She felt like she and her husband barely knew each other. Having conversations was like pulling teeth and there was barely any intimacy between them. When she started some new practices though, in just a few weeks, things were different at her house. Her husband pulled her close at night and the resentment released. She's going to tell us how she did it so you can do it too. But first, let's get to what to do when you find yourself thinking, hey, my husband and I have nothing to talk about because nothing feels lonelier than being married and just eating together in silence or else living under the same roof, but never having the deep conversations you're craving. It feels terrible when the emotional intimacy goes missing like that. So let's talk about how to get that back Get back to sharing your dreams, your desires, and the details of your day. How do you do that? Number one, restore emotional safety. One thing that shuts down conversations fast is when it's not safe to say anything for either one of you. Maybe you're afraid he's going to blame you or shut you out, or he's afraid you're going to micromanage him or criticize him. Neither of you feels free to be yourself, so you stay distant. It feels awful, especially if we used to talk about everything and confide in each other. So how do you restore emotional safety, especially if you're the one who doesn't feel safe? Well, you're going to need a superpower, which is okay because you can develop this superpower. It's pretty counterintuitive, I know, but the best way I've found to restore emotional safety is to scan my side of the street for ways that I contributed to the problem. Even if I was only 10% of the problem and he was 90% of the problem, even if I was only 1% of the problem and he was 99%, whatever, I like having deep conversations and silly conversations and sharing details about our day and our hopes and our dreams. So if that goes missing, I like being able to fix it. Once I figure out what I did, I use my superpower of being able to apologize for being disrespectful or critical or controlling. I didn't used to have this superpower and I thought it was kind of ridiculous, honestly. I was just, I was waiting for him to apologize for his part, but that got old and painful. So I decided to go first. Now I like being able to clean things up myself. And it's crazy how he also apologizes too. But even if he doesn't, I also don't need him to apologize as much anymore. See, it's crazy. I know. So we both got superpowers after I decided to go first. Number two, do something that excites you. Are you doing something that lights you up so that you're excited to talk about it? Well, if not, let's talk about that. What's stopping you from having an adventure or expressing yourself creatively or playing a sport that fills you with endorphins? Like say, well, I don't know, maybe volleyball, for example. Okay. So that's my thing, but what's your thing? Because when you are full of endorphins or bubbling with the excitement of bringing a creative endeavor into the world or planning to have an adventure, a couple of things happen. One, you have something interesting to talk about. And two, you become more attractive because you're so full of joy and excitement. Number three, become a great conversationalist. So how do you do that? By becoming a great listener. By becoming a great listener. Well, how do you do that? How do you become a great listener? Well, it's not as easy as it seems. Speaking of superpowers, I lean on this cheat phrase to remind me that it's what I want to do is to listen well, to be a good listener. 
And the cheat phrase I use is, I hear you. That's it. Just, I hear you. I'm listening. There's no and at the end or a helpful suggestion. There's no disagreeing or being the devil's advocate. There's no judgment. There's just bearing witness, just giving your man the gift of being heard and understood. And every human needs that. If you're wondering how to get started with fixing your relationship and making it shiny again, then you need a roadmap. Get six simple steps to follow that will set your relationship up for success. Discover three common mistakes that wives make trying to fix their relationship that just make things worse. When you download my free Adored Wife Roadmap, you can do that at getcherished.com. Go to getcherished.com now to get your roadmap in minutes. My guest D's relationship lacked connection. She felt like she and her husband barely knew each other. Having conversations was like pulling teeth and there was barely any physical intimacy. When she started some new practices though, in just a few weeks, things were different at her house. Her husband pulled her close at night and the resentment released. She's going to tell us how she did it so you can do it too. Dee, welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast. So excited to have you. Thank you for having me, Laura. I'm excited to be here and to share my story. Awesome. Well, let's start at the beginning. What were things like in the bad old days? <sighs> the bad old days. It's uh, funny to think about it because it, it was. it's not that long ago. It wasn't that long ago. So in the bad old days, I found myself always frustrated, annoyed. Um, and I just felt like my husband, he wouldn't help me around the house, but he always had a way of telling me what to do or what I wasn't doing. So I, I, I just felt myself building up so much resentment to the point where um, he would he would tell me, like, you know, you're just always frustrated and angry. I don't know what's up with you. And I was thinking in my head, like, it's you. You're not doing what <laughs> you're supposed to do. Like, you're not helping me around the house. <laughs> you know, you're not taking me on dates. You don't want to have sex with me like it's it's you. So um it was really awkward in our home. Like we would have dinner together and there would, there wouldn't be much conversation. And I would always tell him like, you know, I want to, I want to be connected to you. I want to have deep conversations. I want to know about what's going on in your life. And he was just quiet most of the time. And I couldn't figure out what it was. So to the point where it was one time where I was like, Oh, um, it's probably just the way he was raised, right? He didn't raised around a lot of affection. And it <laughs> I mean, hearing myself say that now, it's, it's, so, it's ridiculous. But that's what I thought at the time. It was how he was oh. raised. And I had a reality check when I spoke with my mother-in-law. And she was like, he's full of love and affection. And we actually visited her. And I realized that he would speak to his mom all the time. And he would share things with her that he wouldn't share with me. So at that point, I, I, I realized that maybe it's something that I'm not doing. Um, and I think at that point, that was, that was honestly a couple months into our marriage and I ended up buying your book. Um, and I, and I started doing some of the skills, but I'm like, yeah, hey, this, this works for Laura, but I'm not that controlling. I don't need to, I don't <laughs> I don't need to, you know, say whatever you think to everything. I don't need to um, be, uh, I, I just, I just think that there was a lot of things that I was like, ah, eh, well that works for her. It probably isn't, isn't for me. And um, kind of old fashioned I, anyway. Right. Like, right. Yeah. I'm like, what does Laura know? I mean, she's only been right. married for 20 years or something. Right. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> No. Yeah, so, I love it. Um, love I, it. I read the book. I even did some of my own coaching, but I still felt that resentment in me. And my husband and I, we we still weren't 
connecting. And when I mean I did coaching, it wasn't Laura Doyle coaching. It was some other coaching um, that I that I did. Uh, but we weren't um, we weren't connecting. And yeah, so I just found myself really angry, really resentful, just really wishing that I had the marriage that I always dreamed of having. And, you know, we were newlyweds. This is a couple months after we got married and I'm feeling all this. So I definitely thought that like, you know, I married the wrong guy. Maybe I got married too young. This is just, this is, I don't know where to go, you know? It's a lonely spot. And, uh, no, I just love the part where you're like, it's probably how he, it's because of how he was raised. It's probably his mama's fault, right? Like, yeah. I, that was where I went to. I'm like, mm, his mother. Mm -mm. And yep. then, uh, and then I'm amazed though, when you, because it's so hurtful, especially when you see your husband being all friendly and happy and talkative with his mom. Uh, I love that you went to, maybe it's something I'm doing because I went to like, oh, it's because she won't let him go or like, like there was something wrong and with I, that, you know, I did do that as well. And then okay. I diagnosed him. I'm like, oh, well, he's just a mama's boy. He's a mama's and, boy. You know, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's all him. First of all, second of all, still all him and his yeah. mother. Right. Yeah. So uh, anyway, I just identify with that so much. So I love that you went there too. And, uh, and so, and you're feeling all this resentment and anger, first of all, so you're just not feeling real good anyway, but it, yeah. but it also seems like it's totally his fault. And I bet things, I bet it wasn't like this before you were married, when you were falling in love, it wasn't. It wasn't like this at all, Laura, you know, my husband, he was really in the beginning, he was my hero. Like, and I can look at it like, uh, at it like now with my new perspectives, as you call it, because he would go grocery shopping for me. Like if I wanted something, he would get up and buy it for me. Like I can remember telling him like, hey, I want some AirPods and they would disappear or I want an Apple watch and it would appear, you know, and um, he would do so, so much. Um, I I'm trying to think of whatever else. What what else? Um, but yeah, he was just he was my hero. He was always there for me. Oh, he would buy me flowers randomly. One time he bought me an edible arrangement, all of these great things. So I think that's why I'm like, what's going on? Right. Like I didn't I just didn't understand right? what yeah. the the, yeah. the turn the turnaround was mm -hmm. you know like now that he's got me now that we're married he, this is his yeah culture. he's got me he, um, he's charmed me up and um, yeah, yeah. This is just how it's gonna be yeah, yeah that's what forever I and mm -hmm. let's not forget ever right okay so uh was there a moment when you thought okay we we just can't keep going like this yeah. So the moment that I thought um, we can't keep going like this, it was it was first when I bought the book. OK, now that one, I'm like, OK, we're miserable. And then we were doing OK, but we would still have these cycles like, you know, how you call it the old dance. And it would it would still be those cycles. So I would do OK. And then so it was a scenario a couple of weeks ago. Um, it was a it was an incident with our son. My husband and I, we were concerned about um, my son's school and we wanted um, to make sure that he was learning in there. And my husband started to tell me, well, what I need you to do is, you know, maybe teach him more, read to him more. And he started listing out things. And at that point, I just got... <sighs> I'm like, he's giving me another list of things to do. Like I work and I do this and I do that. Why do I have to do so much? So I completely lost it, Laura. And I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. You're always telling me what to do. And da, da, da. so we went through a cold war and um, we actually ended up making up. I did issue an apology um, but it wasn't a Laura Doyle apology at that time. It wasn't because my memory of the skills were they were dusty. So <laughs> I issued an apology. And then, Laura, less than a week later, we ended up having a blow up again because of the same thing. And, um, you know, after I, I want to do mention this, too, when I issued my apology, my husband actually 
tears started coming out of his eyes because he said, you know, I just feel like I can't say anything to you. You know, I, I can't really even express how I want to um, parent our son without you being so angry and, you know, l lashing out. So for, you know, less than I think it was a week or, and a half. And then we had this incident again. You know, I, I think it, it really hurt him. And I was really disappointed in myself as well, because I'm like, wow, he just less than two weeks ago just shared his heart with me and here we are again i'm angry and i'm and i'm raging at him and i'm telling him that i want a divorce because i don't want to hear what he has to say so that was a moment where i thought you know we can't go on like this because he ended up moving not moving he ended up um not sleeping with me for like two weeks and i'm like oh my gosh i was i was really scared even though i was the one who brought up divorce I was really scared because I'm like, I'm hurting my husband, but I'm also just, I know it's, I'm not happy myself. So yeah. And you just want to wake him up, right? You just want him to realize how exactly miserable you are and then do something to fix it. Right. right? What exactly. else is there to do besides show him how angry you are, right? Exactly. Which, uh, but also sounds like it was it was eating at you that he was so hurt. And also um, you said, I love you said I was disappointed in myself. It's so it's so accountable. It's so beautiful, really, because mm. uh, and I just remember feeling that way, too. Like, oh, I got that hangover again from yeah. letting those rageful words come out of me. And that's yeah. the whole energy. All of it just kind of yeah. circulate through me. Feels terrible. So um Okay. So, and then, and then you already, and you already had the book at this point. Yeah, uh, I already had the book. I was right? listening to the podcast and I said, you know what? I need something more. You know, I'm like, <laughs> I got the book, I got the podcast. And I was desperate because I'm like, there's no way I'm, I'll be honest. I was committed to my man. I'm like, there's no way that I'm going to get a divorce because I could remember those good days and how he was my hero. I just, I just couldn't put the pieces together on what was missing. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go into the lawyer Doyle community. I took the webinar. I got accepted in. And when I was in, I was just amazed by what I saw in there. And I was so inspired from day one. First, I was inspired when I was reading through the list. And you said, even if you join for a month, I think that you'll have a transformation. So I said, you know what? That was my intent to join for a month. And I said, I'm going to take everything that I can out of that community while I'm in there. And I'm going to give it my best go because my marriage deserved it. And like I said, what I saw in there was just, it was so amazing because I've, I've been part of other communities and I haven't been a part of a community yet that is so safe. There's so many women fighting for your marriage, so many women encouraging you. Your coaches have this amazing ability to listen and to make you feel heard and to, you know, really nurture your emotions. Like, you know, I could remember a time where I was going through that and I, I didn't really have that anywhere else. So that that really inspired me. And, um, you know, I, I, I really I really love that. Yeah. And it sounds like you came in so open and yeah. uh, willing to uh, be coached. So, you know, I, I just give you a lot of credit for uh, for that. And then, um, it, and it's true. I, I think safety, that is like the most astonishing thing about being part of our community. I still will get surprised. I'll go to a, a a baby shower or something here, women talking like they normally do. And mm -hmm. I'll think, Oh, this is like, get me out of here. Like, yeah. I, I want to be back in the community where it's safe. Right. And there's, yes. and we're, you know, respectful and things like that. So mm -hmm. uh, we're accountable, respectful, we're accountable. and kind yeah. like all of these Encouraging, things. Yeah. Yeah, positive. And then, and, and then there's the empathy too, like you were saying, like, yeah, yeah 
you know, your experience is real. The pain that you're in is real. We're not trying to dismiss that. Um, but yeah, so, uh, so, so what did you start doing different than you'd been doing things uh, once, once that happened? So what I started to do differently as I started to, the first thing was focusing on how do I feel? What do I want? Because I realized attending the group coaching calls and listening to your modules, like, listen, I listen to some of your modules sometimes like three times a day. Okay. <laughs> I was not playing, especially the one about respect relinquishing control and vulnerability. Those seem to be my top three. But yeah, I started to focus on what do I want and how do I feel? Because a lot of my, when I was listening to the the sessions, a lot of my resentment was stemming from me focusing on, well, what does my husband want and how can I make him happy? And I wasn't focusing on what I wanted. I wasn't even expressing my desires at all. I was just trying to please him and it was really, I mean, I hate to say it this way, but it was killing me inside. It really was. Um, so by focusing on what do I want and how do I feel and be able to express my desires in the way that inspires, I just felt like so much of that resentment, so much of that anger being released from me. And um, in the past, I realized that I would express a desire. I got my air quotes up right now. <laughs> um, but it had a lot of expectation with it. So, or, you know, or sometimes it was just what you call a lazy desire, which is a, a complaint. Right. And it's like, oh, you know, why don't we do this? Or I, I, I would love to do this. And if he doesn't do it, then he has to deal with my rage and my anger or my attitude. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what I started to focus on expressing those desires without the expectation really, really helped me because I was able to let it out. And like, this is what I want, you know, and you know, it might happen. It may not, but I feel better knowing that I at least express what I want instead of, you know, catering to his needs and, you know, expecting that he'll know what I want with me just being quiet. So that was one of the things that I started to do um, differently. Huge. I love how yeah. your whole face lit up. You go, this is what I want. Like, yeah. I kind of, you just look so happy. and It's attractive, you know, it's yeah. uh, kind of endearing. So, and he wasn't getting that before he was getting it, but with like an expectation, kind of an undercurrent of anger, it sounds like maybe. Yeah. And, and so these uh, desires were coming out clean, no, yeah. no expectations, manipulations, or uh, uh, no entitlement, it sounds like. Yeah. And that uh, made you feel good. And then uh, how did he, how did he respond once he heard these desires coming out? You know, he responded really well. I mean, the first thing I told him is that I've always I've always liked to dress really nice and things like that. So the first thing I told him is like, I'm like, I want to make sure that I'm still, you know, dressing how I want and putting time into my appearance because I completely let that go because I was just. I just wanted to be the perfect wife. Like I wanted to keep the house clean and put the baby to bed on time and cook dinner by a certain time and all of these other things. So I told him that and he actually, when he got his uh, paycheck, he brought me some money and I'm like, what's this for? And he's like, well, whatever you want to do with it. And I was so happy because I wasn't expecting that. And he never did that before. So um, that's how he responded to it. And, you know, um, that's the first thing I can think of. And and he would just listen. It seems like they're, they're being received well. Oh, I love yeah. that. Such a, uh, so sweet. Yes. Yeah, so it was just, it was just something about D, you know, I just love uh, spending time on my appearance, feeling good about looking my best. Yeah. And he wanted to be your hero and help make that happen by bringing you some money. Super sweet story. So he's, mm -hmm. so that hero guy that you fell in love with, he was still in there and you were seeing evidence of that. He was still in there, you know, and I, 
I mean, Laura, I labeled him so many ways. I'm like, well, he's just lazy. I mean, he just, like you said, he had me already. He's not going to want to do all those things. And um, I thought he wasn't attracted to me anymore. And, and I mean, so many of those things. But he was still there, just kind of, I guess, laying dormant, waiting. <laughs> waiting for the right opportunity to uh, jump on in <laughs> wow he's yeah. like if I get a chance I'm gonna take it and he got yeah. gave him a chance I love it yeah and so um so what else did you do differently or was there anything else that you did differently besides yeah a what, lot what I another thing I did Laura is I I let my guard back down um when I got into the the community, I realized that vulnerability was really hard for me to do. So in the beginning of our relationship, um, I was I was very vulnerable, right? But there was this moment where my husband he compared me to another woman. So I didn't I either didn't do the dishes or I didn't um, make the bed up. And he said, you know, another woman would have done it this way. And at that point, a, a light switched on in my head. I was like, oh, no, he will never be able to say that to me again. So I made sure that I would do everything, I guess, perfectly and, and try to do it, you know, to my best ability. So I didn't have to hear those harsh words mm -hmm. um, again from him because it, it really hurt me. That's, hurt. that's really, yeah. yeah, it hurt me a lot. So from there, I decided, yeah, being vulnerable with him isn't safe. Um, so, you know, yeah, I, I just thought he judged me. He doesn't yeah. accept me for who I yeah. am. I can't make mistakes. That's what I was telling myself. And, you know, I said, you know what? After listening to the modules, I'm like, I'm going to I'm going to try with this vulnerability thing. I'm going to try with saying, ouch, I'm going to try with saying I can't if I if I literally can't do something, because in the past, I would try to be superwoman yeah. to shield myself from any criticisms. Right. But um, again, I was angry, resentful. So that wasn't working. <laughs> so that's Not what really, I started yeah. to do using some of those phrases like I can't and, and, and saying, ouch. And I, and I still struggle sometimes with, oh, yeah. with saying that ouch, but I know you, you say that even recognizing that as progress. So I make sure that I'm taking note. Yeah. yeah. It's so hard for me to say ouch sometimes too. I just yeah. want to like, oh, what? Like, yeah. You know, I, yeah. How dare you? But, uh, yeah, yeah. In my better moments. Uh, um, yeah. So, um, so you did he did you so you had the opportunity to to say ouch to him? Yeah. Yeah. I played around with it. Um I said it once. Um because I was using we were at the dinner table, we were having a conversation, right? And it was it was going really well and he was asking for my opinion on something. And I said, you know, whatever you think. And he said to me, "Do you have an opinion about anything?" Ooh, and ooh, ooh, I'm ooh. like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that was really like, um, so I laugh, but I was really hurt. I'll be honest, Laura. I, I laugh and I'm like, <laughs> ouch. Um, and I put that in the community there. And um, I realized afterwards by someone in commented and I realized that I should have just said, ouch, because it was really something that was hurt or hurtful to me. Um but I kind of like try to like laugh to keep from crying. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I was able to play around with that and, and I'm, and I'm still, and I'm still trying to do it as well. Yeah. Well, and this is especially painful because here you're using the skills. You're yeah. like, I'm doing this right. I said, whatever you think. And that's, you know, that's something we all practice saying. So I think it can be, uh, very discouraging when you feel like you're doing so much and you're yeah. saying whatever you think. And, and then he says, do you even have an opinion? Which is yeah. Big old bait. Very hurtful. Very. I mean, <clears throat> did you feel discouraged? Like, you know what? I don't know if I'm going to say whatever you think anymore. Cause that's like what made him 
you, you know what happening you know yeah definitely I could definitely see that happen and maybe in that moment I was a, I was confused and maybe a little bit discouraged but you know what after he said that and I said ouch I don't know it was something in me it must have been maybe you and my conscience because I'm listening to you like three times a day <laughs> We're friends. We um, hang out together. I followed okay. it up with the spouse fulfilling prophecy. And I said, you know, I just really trust your judgment and your opinion on things. And yeah, and that, that really, I think, I don't know if it was that day or another day. I have another story to share, but um, it, it kind of took the, the heaviness out of the conversation and we were able to move past it. And be, 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 um, before the skills, though, I probably would have shut down and been like, you know what, this is why I don't talk to you. This is why, I, you know, Throwing walk away eggs. from the dinner table, dinner's yeah. over. But I was able to really lean into the skills and um, I felt empowered and I felt dignified <laughs> yes. doing that. So that's what encouraged me to say, you know what? I got this because oh. I, I'm not really clean and he can say whatever he wants, but um, I choose how <laughs> I'm going to show up. So, yeah. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, Good yeah. job. Uh, I feel like you made a touchdown. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Cause the dignity. Yeah. You got that piece, right? You were yeah. no longer stuck in that uh, resentment ride that hey, we, yeah, feeling all yucky. Um, yeah, and and it sounds like uh, the intimacy was preserved too, even though you yes. were hurt. Uh, you, yeah, that is now speaking of superpowers, right? You talked about being yeah. superpowers. This is kind of a different sort of superpower where you felt uh, so empowered to be dignified. D. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well, I love that story, and uh, you mentioned you had another one too. So I'm like, well, tell us that. What was that? Yeah. So another one of the stories is, you see, the reason why I was encouraged to keep using whatever you think and staying on my paper, you know, is what you talk about is everything that I'm responsible for, everything that I'm in control over staying on my paper is because two things. One, we were going on a trip and my husband decided to, and this was at the beginning of when I joined the, the community, my husband was grabbing his laptop. And I asked him a question. I was I was curious, you know. I said, "Are you you gonna bring your laptop with you?" And he was like, "Yeah." Um, and fast forward, we get to our destination, and he ends up not bringing his laptop. And um, his boss asked him to do something, and he couldn't complete the task. And he said, "See, this is why I don't listen to you." And I was like, I was so confused because I'm like, I didn't tell him what to do. But a little bit after that, again, um, I remember you said leading questions. Although I didn't tell him what to do, I was sneakily being on his paper by like, hey, you're, you're bringing your laptop. We're on vacation, right? And I realized the weight of my words in that moment. So that's one of the things that encouraged me to say, you know what, whatever you think, because I'll be honest, Laura, I don't want to be blamed for his mistakes. You know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> that's, yeah. a, that's a lot of responsibility to carry. And another story about using whatever you think, my husband was shopping for some work clothes. And um, again, he was asking me like, well, what do you think about this? And what do you think about that? And I'm just like, you know, oh, that's a nice color or, oh, this and oh, that. And um, he ended up finding a shirt that he really liked. And I'm like, wow, you have such good taste. I really love what you picked out at the end of it without telling him, you know, what to pick. And he's like, you see, I have the vision, right? And I'm like, yeah, you do have the vision. <laughs> it's your clothes and you should wear whatever you want, right? Um but yeah, you know, and I really, I really struggled with that at first. And I put that in the community because I'm like, is he asking me my opinion? Cause like I mentioned before, I really am into fashion and I'm into yeah. dressing yeah. and uh, one of your coaches, <laughs> I don't know if she intended on this being funny, but it was so funny to me. One of them said, <laughs> you know, 
I know you feel like you're, I know I can relate, or I know you feel like your husband wants advice from a fashion expert. And at that moment, I busted out laughing because I'm no fashion expert at all. (laughs) (laughs) So, (laughs) oh. (laughs) <laughs> right so i'm like you know what you have a point i forget the coach's name and i'm like all right um i'm gonna trust that he knows what to wear because he does right and even if yeah. i try to slide on in there whatever he's gonna pick for himself he's gonna like it the most so yeah oh yeah so accountable, <laughs> dude. it's super endearing i love that you took the laptop story and really attached that, you know, cause you could have said to yourself, well, I didn't tell him not to bring it. I just asked if he was going to bring it. And, yeah. um, and you really went, you know, like the elevator went all the way to the basement. You're like, oh yeah, I kind of let him know. I didn't approve of that decision yeah. uh, with my work, my question. Uh, and then, um, and then you made a different choice with this work, work clothes shopping trip. And he picked out, I mean, and I just, I love that he, had a moment of like standing taller, like, see, I've got the vision, right? I'm yeah. I'm the dress sharp, right? I can do this. Yeah. Uh, and that's actually very attractive in a way too, right? To see your man uh, so proud and, and yeah, feel like he's dressing himself sharp too, right? Yeah. Yeah. I uh, love that. And that's when I was like, oh, this is definitely working. <laughs> You're like, it I was like so this. many, he was asking me my opinion on so many things. And I'm like, my God, I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep this up. I was two <laughs> seconds away from <laughs> just caving in and telling him, that looks great, honey. Let's just, let's go out and <laughs> get that one. out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would get that one. Or yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I would do? <laughs> right. <laughs> that one's on sale or something. Yeah, yeah. You're right. <laughs> so, yeah. I love that. So you had just enough persistence, it sounds like, to get yeah, through just to, enough. to the promised land where he's like, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's cool. I love that story. Mm-hmm. Um, and so and what about uh the physical intimacy? Because you mentioned that that was pretty dried up um before it was pretty rare at your house you had said so um how 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 is that how's that going the physical intimacy has been so much better I mean so much more passionate and my husband is starting to initiate again and in the past I would like complain about that I'm like why don't you ever initiate (laughs) I'm laughing now because it's so embarrassing and I sound like a broken record, but that was really one of my desires. Um, I wanted to be intimate with him. Um, but, you know, now, you know, things are things are definitely spicy again. So I love it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And it doesn't feel I mean, I just remember for me, it didn't feel that good to ask him because I wanted him to want me <laughs> right so, so it felt a lot better when he started and um and so what is your relationship like now overall so my relationship now it's I feel so I guess so safe like my husband he comes home and he wants to share things with me that happened throughout his day at work or just share things that's going on in the family and like I mentioned before that, that just wasn't the case like it was like pulling teeth. I mean, I felt so awkward at our dinner table and and just in our relationship in general. Um, Now, you know, what else is going on at our house? I just feel like we're laughing. Oh yeah, we're laughing and we're playing. And before things were just so uptight and serious and he'll come home with like, the other day he came home with like water guns and we were like playing with the water (laughs) guns and stuff. And after work, (laughs) yeah, it was really fun. After work, we'll go on walks together. And like I said before, he's giving me money and things like that. So, I mean, it just, it feels really safe. We feel really connected to each other. I mean, I feel really connected to him and I, and I think he does too, because he's sharing more with me. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's what it, what it's like in our home. A lot of affection and things like that, hugging and kissing and yeah. 
Congratulations. I give you all the credit for that mm -hmm. incredible transformation. Yeah. That was impressive. What about just um, speaking of D, like how are you different? I am happier. I find myself in more of a calm state. And it's funny because my husband would always tell me like, you just need to be more calm. And I'm like, I'm the calmest person ever. Like, what are you talking about? But I, I really wasn't. <laughs> Laura, I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't at peace with myself. And I just feel so much more. I feel so much more peace. I feel calmer. I feel happy. I'm doing the things that I want to do. I'm tending to myself and my self-care. Um, I feel more connected to other women as well. Like I'm able to hear their heart message and when they're sharing their heart, because I really study some of your coaches and I love the way that they would listen and the way that they would respond and how they were so gentle. So um, that's how I'm different. Yeah. Wow. And had you, you're kind of a self-improver, I think. So had mm -hmm. you, you had done other things trying to kind of work on, um, like this anger and resentment, right? You had mentioned coaching and things like that. What yeah. Else, what else had you tried to do to uh, kind of get to a place of peace for yourself? Yeah. So I've I've gone to therapy. I've done therapy. I mean, the therapist was great, but again, found myself in the same cycle. I've done um, a coaching with um, a mentor of mine. Um, and we did, we also did relationship coaching and we went to one session and then we never went back. Um, <laughs> and I kept telling, I kept reminding him, I'm like, Hey, you know, cause we, we signed up for a plan of a four sessions and we only went to one. It was already paid for And I'm like, Hey, when we go, go back and it just never happened. Um, so, yeah, I did a lot. I've read a lot of books and things like that, trying to work on this anger and like, where is it stemming from? Where is it coming from? And um, the coaching that I did, it did help some, but we couldn't get down to the um, the the uh, my internal anger and rage. And I believe the missing piece to that was my my desires and honoring myself like you guys say, and honoring my limits. That's what it was. It was, um, she would give me things to do. She even told me one day, like, you know, go to a rage room. Sometimes you need to just release it that way. And I was like, yeah, maybe. But then I thought about it and I'm like, I don't know if a rage room would be that helpful for me because I can't always just rage in real life. You know what I mean? And break stuff. So <laughs> I don't want to, too. As, as you right. say, I'm like, I don't know, so not exciting to me, but all right. I think the water gun fight, that sounds pretty fun, but, right. <laughs> but the rage room, not so much to me. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. but so I did it. do um, some things, but this was the, the key to me. All of the, all of the things, honestly, I took a deep dive into all of your skills, like even the part about relinquishing the finances and that's something that I read I think that's one of the things that I read I said well no I'm good with money I'll just I'll keep doing it and I'll keep you know reminding him to do this and that and I said you know what what I've been doing it's not working so this time I just I went in all in on them and um you know the the improvements that I saw I remember I told my husband I said you know what I can't do the finances anymore because I get too stressed and overwhelmed, which is true for me. I do get stressed and overwhelmed and it's like the end of a world. If something is paid late or we don't have enough money and then I'm pressing him and um, he, he said, okay. And I was so scared to say that. And I remember a couple of, I don't know if it was days or a week or so. He asked me at the dinner table, he's like, you know, well, why do you trust me to handle the money? And um, I, I thought about it for a second and I'm just like, because, you, you know, you're you're really so good at it and, and handling um, our money. You always, were, you know, would take care of it and how his face lit up, Laura. I've never seen him smile like that before. 
I was like, wow. I was, I felt like at that moment I was stealing that from him this whole time. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. And I gave him my, um, my spending plan. Now it took me some time. I think I did that like the last week of um, the month that I was in the community. I gave him my spending plan because I was nervous. I'm like, what if he thinks that it's too much or what if he says this or that? But he just said, okay. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> well, this is easier than I thought. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was oh. really, really nice. That gave me chills. That brought tears to my eyes. That story. Yeah. I love, that sounds so intimate. It sounds yes. so connected. And it sounds like you feel like a good wife again. Yeah. Is that right? Do I have that I right? feel like a great wife. Like that's one of the things that I say to myself, like I'm a great wife. And I really feel that because I feel like I, I trust him, you know, I can trust him to make his own decision. I can trust him to handle the finances, even if, you know, and I can respect him. You know, he's like you say, even if it's something I don't agree with. I still respect him. It's his decision to make. He may not, he may make a payment late. He can deal with it. I don't have to. So I do, I really do feel like a better wife and just a, a better woman overall. Yeah. Wow. And are you still making sure the bed is made, dinner's on the table, you know, all that stuff that you were? Uh, nah. If I can't do it, <laughs> it's just going to cost me my piece, Laura. You know what? Um, I would love some some Chinese or something. You know, I would love to to to, to take a nap or, um, yeah. No, I just I can't. I can't. I can't do it all. And I had to to really realize that. And I guess um, surrender to just being a mere mortal woman, right? <laughs> ah, I love that. And it yeah. sounds like that wasn't the path to being a good wife anyway. Right, exactly. Yeah, it was a path to being a nagging, negative, angry, and resentful wife for me. Just yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah for me too. <laughs> yeah. So I, I just love getting to hear, and you're so accountable. It comes out real natural, but this mm. is a big, this takes a lot of courage, right? Yeah. To even uh, to look at yourself uh, and say, wow all those things you just said about yourself, right? Those really clash with just your ego, you know, yeah. image of yourself. Like I'm a good person. I'm a good wife. Right. Mm -hmm. And then to, to be able to say all those things um, in the, in the, for the purpose of being able to transform your, yeah. you and, and really become the best you uh, exactly. it takes a lot of humility. Right. Yes. So. Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of humility and a lot of, I guess, me just really realizing the the part that I played and how things were. Yeah, on, on a very deeper level. I mean, I did a lot of disrespectful things, you know, and I wasn't showing up <clears throat> the best woman that I could be. And one of the, my key takeaways from one of your coaches is, she asks, well, who do you want to be even if, you know, and to me, that's like, that's real power because I know they have this quote. that says when other, go when others go low, we go high. And it always feel good, good to me to go high. You know, I don't, I don't like at the dinner table when I, I was hurt, but I was able to go high. I feel good about myself. So yeah. The view from the high roads, just gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that sounds you sound empowered. It's very yeah. inspiring, D. I love that. Yeah. And what about um, so you have you have a little person, you guys have a son. Um yeah. so how do you think this has impacted him or has it uh had any impact that you've done? Um, I think it has impacted him. In a, in a very positive way because he sees us hugging and kissing and then he wants to get in the middle or like if I'm hugging on his dad he'll like push me away or <laughs> <laughs> yeah um and he's just so happy when we're together like and we're happy and and you know we're embracing each other he's just he's the same he's the same way 
and seeing that it really, it really, it lights up my heart. It lights up my heart. Seriously. It's got to feel so good as a yeah. mom to. Yes, it does. Yeah. And I feel like I'm, I'm um, being an example for what a good woman, you know, should be a good wife should be. And um, just the family dynamics in our home, you know, how it's, it's a peace and I respect his father and I trust him and example, you know, so what he can aspire to be when he grows up. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. someday when he gets married, you're going to say to his wife, oh, actually, he's very loving, right? Like, yeah, like, like exactly. your mother said to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. And um, what do, what's your best tip for somebody who is where you were, where her husband is critical and it's, they barely speak and there's not much physical intimacy mm -hmm. she feels like maybe she married the wrong man which is kind of what i hear you saying too like maybe you shouldn't have married this one you should have married someone yeah, there's some absolutely. other man out there it was better kind of thing and for sure and she and she wants what you have now which is you know um it's like him bringing you money and just you guys laughing together and having squirt gun fights uh, to keep cool and just you know, having fun, <laughs> just laughing. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this kind of snuggling, your, your family snuggles, like you're talking about. She wants that, but she's where you were. What's your best tip for her? My best tip for her is to focus on yourself. Um, you know, really look at anything you can change and um, go from there. I mean, just being in the community and seeing so many stories of different women in my situation or in different circumstances and how committed they are to focusing on themselves is, I think that's where the, the real transformation lies. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds so wise. That's the, the one thing you can control. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you think if you could go back in time and talk to D and tell her what you know now, what would you say? I would say, girl, lighten up, you know? <laughs> Lori, you said your middle name was Steamroller. I guess mine was Stickler for a bit. <laughs> Stickler. <laughs> yeah. Stickler. I, I mean, um, yeah, just lighten up. Bring that that fun and light back, you know? Take care of yourself. That's what I would I would tell myself, you know. Um, and I remember even my mother in law telling me, like, you have to take care of yourself. And I'm like, Yeah, but I got things to do. Yeah. Right? No, but it's Work. true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's true. I have to take care of myself. So yeah, definitely those things. Yeah. Well, amazing you have done an incredible job with your marriage i love it it sounds like you were only in ridiculously happy wife for one month and you did yeah. all of this it's yeah incredible yeah i mean did you think you'd did you ever think you'd be on this podcast doing a victory lap with me and a happy dance <laughs> what? after one month I'm, i'll be honest laura not this soon and not with all of these amazing stories these amazing takeaways and all of those things but i think it's because i went in with the intention of you know what i'm gonna get everything that i can and I'm going to apply everything. Um, I mean, I was on group coaching calls two times a week. I was listening um, to the calls, um, like those three, respect, relinquishing really control and vulnerabilities so many times a day. And um, yeah, if you're a woman listening to this and, and you really need a community to take it to the next step, I think Ridiculously Happy Wives is is definitely the way to go. It, it was... I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> loved. I'm well, I'm so happy that we found each other and mm -hmm. this is such a gift. In fact, and also I'd like to present you with my <gasps> here. This is the the best wife award oh my God. that I'm giving to you. Yeah. <laughs> and recognition for your incre incredible accomplishment of fixing your marriage, right? You were threatening divorce at one point. Yeah. And now it sounds like that's the last thing that you're, you know, is on your mind Absolutely. and you've created a happy home. I just admire that so much. Yeah. I find that very inspiring. So congratulations, Steve. Thank you so much, Laura.
Thank you. You are welcome. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing so authentically and so vulnerably with us. What a gift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're welcome. If you'd like to be my guest on the Empowered Wife podcast and share about how you fixed a struggling relationship using the six intimacy skills, I would love to interview you. Just go to lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest to let me know that you are willing to make a big contribution to ending world divorce by telling your relationship story. I look forward to meeting you. That's lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest. Listen and subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. On next week's episode, we're going to talk about five signs that your husband is not supportive. In the meantime, I hope you're having lots of fun. Today's fun fact is that John is getting dinner for us tonight, and I sure hope he gets the one specific thing that I want to eat, but didn't tell him about. <laughs> <laughs>